Hi guys, long time no see. I turned 20 back in November, which is crazy. I've had this channel since I was 13. I privated a lot of my old videos. Maybe I'll repost some, but I honestly cringe a little bit. I wanted to film this video on advice I would give my younger self. I just think it's been a while since I've done an advice video. I used to always do advice videos and I really like them. I think, I feel like I'm good at advice. I'm always good at following my own advice, but I feel like I'm like, decently good at advice. This AC thing is gonna piss me off. Yeah, I turned 20 and the last year of my life has just been kind of rough. Obviously, I've had great moments as well, but I've just had a lot of learning lessons. So I made a list on my phone, on my notes app, of around like 20 things. There might be a couple more, but about 20 things I've learned in my 20 years of life that I really wish I could tell my younger self. Without further ado, let's go ladies! Number one, falling down, having bumps in the road, messing up, going through obstacles is actually a great thing and a very, very necessary part of life. I know it sucks when things don't go your way. When life just feels like it's crumbling down, it's actually not a bad thing. I ghosted like everyone for months because I was doing so bad. It took so long of me sitting down moping, feeling sorry for myself. I mean, understandably, I had my fair reasons, but it was more of me just being like, why me? Why is my life so hard? I'm actually really so blessed but everyone has their problems, but I'm learning so much and it's the journey of understanding how to pick yourself up that's gonna make you go so much stronger. It just helps give you tools to work through other hard things in your life. Life is just full of shit that you don't know what's gonna happen. Having bad moments is really great because those are the moments where you're gonna learn the most, grow the most. I mean, when you hit rock bottom, there's only up from there. Number two, family is very important. Try and build a super strong relationship with your family. I haven't always had the easiest relationships with each member of my family, like my close family. I'm talking my sister, my mom, my dad. Our relationships have always been up and down, but as long as you put effort in to work through those hard times and know that like family is so important. Fuck, I didn't write this one down, but another one is nobody is perfect. I wish I could just tell my younger self to stop having such high expectations of everyone. Like, honestly, not everyone's gonna reach it and you just need to like understand that. Know that you can't control everyone. Just have a little bit more compassion, like be a little bit more understanding. People mess up at times and just learn to forgive a little bit more know your values and stick to them this is kind of something i learned when i did some therapy my therapist wanted me to list out my top 10 values and rank them sometimes the rankings change um, but for example if i find mine one to ten my values are faith health discipline emotional stability freedom friends and family career advancement loyalty and trust diversity and adventure and spontaneity yeah, take that as you will, but I learned to live your life according to these values. For example, I don't know if my sister is gonna get annoyed at me for sharing this. Please don't. I Everything's cool now. I love you. For example, I was in a therapy session and I was telling my therapist about how I was really upset. My sister owed me like hundred dollars or something and honestly it wasn't even about the money it was more just about the fact like it was more of the concept i'm not gonna go in the whole into the whole situation but it was more about like the concept of the situation and how i just felt it was more of like a trusting thing like i felt like she broke trust and my therapist was like okay look i can see that this is very much bothering you it was really causing a lot of resentment from me towards my sister and i was just really torn because i didn't want to feel that like i wanted to be close with her but i just was really struggling because I had all this built up like anger. The therapist made me go back and look at my values and she was like, okay, well, we clearly see that which of my values did this situation kind of interfere with? Family and friends and loyalty and trust. To me, family and friends go in my ranking above loyalty and trust. The therapist basically explained to me that I need to figure out what's most important to me, holding the grudge because of the like loyalty and the trust thing that I felt upset about. Or do I just need to let it go? If it's really not affecting me, like I don't really need this hundred dollars, you know? It was more of the concept. Or I just let it go so that I can have a good relationship with her and it will stop interfering with like the friends and family. And at first I was a little bit hesitant, but I was like, you know what, this kind of makes sense. I decided to just let it go, try and build a good relationship with her anyway. And honestly, I'm really happy I did so. It's just like one of the situations as an example, but anything, any obstacle, any good thing, any opportunity, whether it's a job opportunity, whether it's a relationship, if you're ever put in a situation where you're not sure what to do, go to your values and see how much it aligns with your values. Next is only you can change things, not the person who's giving you advice. This one took me actually a very, very long time to kind of understand. I love watching advice videos just like this. They motivate me and they're great to watch because they are motivating. But at the end of the day, you watching these advice videos 
It's not gonna do anything for you if you don't actually apply them to your life and listen to it and take action. I mean, you could come to me for as much advice as you need and I could give you like all the helpful best pieces of advice in the world and it still will not make a single difference to your life until you decide to put in the effort to change things. That's something that I really had to learn the hard way. Because these past six months when I was struggling so hard, I would call my mom in the middle of the night in England and I would just call her bawling my eyes out, like crying so hard, being like, I just feel like life is never gonna get better. I have no hope, I'm so stressed. And my mom would sit there and she would give me advice. And I almost started feeling really bad because it was like she would give me all this advice and things just weren't changing. It wasn't because there was anything wrong with her advice. It was just because I wasn't doing what I needed to do to fix things. And this kind of goes into my next piece of advice, which is you can't control other people's actions. Same thing with if you're giving your best friend advice, stop going back to this toxic boy. He's just gonna cheat on you again. Give as much advice as you want, but at the end of the day, you can't control other people's actions. It's the same thing with if you have a boyfriend and you have a bad feeling that he's gonna cheat on you. Like you cannot control what he's gonna do. All you can control is how you react. You can tell them, hey, this is how I feel. This is what I want. This is this, but there's only a certain amount of things you can say. At the end of the day, you can only control how you react to situations. I learned this last year. It's really important to just put up a barrier sometimes because I would get into fights with my mom. I wouldn't like the way she was reacting to the things that I would say and I would get really upset. Just sometimes you need to put up a little emotional barrier, a little emotional wall. Learned this in my therapy. Just like not let it get past my bubble. Like, okay, you're gonna act like that. That's fine. It's not gonna ruin my whole day and I'm still gonna be able to move on and like get through my day and do my shit and get my shit done and then I can come back to it after and talk about it but it's not gonna like affect me because before like if I got into any sort of conflict with anyone I cared about my mom a boyfriend it used to really affect my entire day I would be a bitch to anyone who I was around I couldn't get anything done I couldn't concentrate and that's normal you know it affects you you have to learn how to put it aside sometimes and just deal with it later because life comes up you know you've got to work you've got to get stuff done anyway and you can't let other people's actions stop you from living your own life. India, younger India, listen up, please. It is okay to have a routine. I used to be so against routines. My mom would be like, India, you need a routine. I'd be like, no. But now I love routines. And it doesn't mean my day goes the same way every day. No, my day is very different all the time. Especially with being a model, things come up. I can't really plan things out straight all the time. The casting will come up randomly or I'll get a text about a photo shoot the day before. What I mean is to just have a routine as in like things that you do every single day. One of my little like routine things is every morning I wake up and the first thing I do is I brush my hair and teeth. And then I go make myself a cup of hot water with apple cider vinegar, lemon, and ginger. And I sit and I journal one page of my journal. I drink my tea. And that's like one little thing that's Part of a routine for me. This helps me feel like I've got my life together. Next is sleep cures everything. Please get good sleep. I usually have to have at least eight hours of sleep every night. It just makes me feel so much better. I am way less of a bitch. My overall health is just so much better when I've got good sleep. Feel less bloated. Like, okay, sometimes going to bed after feeling like I overate a little bit too much and I'm feeling uncomfortable and feeling anxious, like I'll just be like, okay, dude, just go to bed, go to sleep. Don't think about it. Don't punish yourself for it. Just go to sleep. Sometimes if I get like a good nine, 10 hours of sleep, this happened the other day, I woke up and I looked at myself in the mirror. I was like, damn, like I actually, I look really good. Also getting good sleep is the number one way that you will see results. If you're on a fitness journey or a health journey, you'll see the results the quickest when you get good sleep, trust me. Trust me. Next is go outside more and go on more walks. Going outside makes me feel so much better. And I was thinking, why was my mental health so amazing? Back when I lived in England, it's cause like all I did was go on two hour walks every day. Long walks outside in nature was the best thing for my mental health. It's like therapy. Okay, this next one maybe should have been one of the first ones, but save your money. Oh my God, I wish I could go back and tell this to my younger self. Save your freaking money. What is wrong with you? Gosh, I used to spend my money on the dumbest things. I have a savings account. When I used to keep all my money in my checking account, I used to be like, wow, I have so much money. I'm great. No, now I have a savings account and then I try and only keep like a thousand at most in my checking account and I try and keep the rest in my savings. And sometimes I won't even have like a thousand in my checking sometimes i'll literally just have a few hundred and it stops me from like looking at everything and being like oh i can buy that i can buy that just because the money's in my account doesn't mean i should buy it that helped me a lot next is confidence is the key to finessing life this one is so important to me because if you guys know the story of how i got signed to ford my modeling agency it's just crazy it was during like covid time still kind of ford weren't accepting any walk-ins but i just 
walked on in anyway. They were confused how I even got let up because there's like security. They're like, hi. I'm like, hi. Yeah, security let me up. They were really confused. But nevertheless, they were very happy and signed me. It was truly all because I just had this like confidence. Like sometimes people ask me like, do you do manifestation? And I guess it's kind of like manifesting, but I don't actually like actively think I'm doing it. In my head, it's like my life just isn't gonna go any other way. When I went to New York, I could have easily not gotten signed. In my head, it was like, okay, but it's just not gonna go any other way. Like everything works out for me. It just, it does. It does. It's not even me saying that to try and manifest it. Like it just, it does. But it was just my confidence. And another thing that really opened my eye up to, as to why confidence is, is such key, because I actually lost a lot of confidence. Ugh. My gag reflex gets really triggered anytime I talk about not having confidence. This is not a space where insecurities are welcome. None of us here are insecure. We're all very confident. But like really, I lost majority of my confidence. Like I did not want to be seen. I ghosted all my friends. I didn't go out just because I lost all my confidence. I literally haven't posted on my Instagram since last year. Crazy. When I lost so much confidence, like, I was not getting like anywhere nearly as much pretty privilege as I used to. Not a lot changed. Obviously, I still have the same face, still have the same hair. I gained some weight, but like I didn't just get butt face ugly overnight. But my confidence dropped as if I did. That's why I wasn't getting any of this like pretty privilege that I used to get. Life wasn't going as much my way. I just didn't have confidence. That's what it was. And also, I know it wasn't just because I gained weight, because I gained the same weight as I used to be back before I got like more super skinny the same way as I was probably summer 2020 so here this and this and I used to still get like a lot of like pretty privilege you know what it's not pretty privilege it's confidence next is stop telling everyone your business not everyone needs to know trust me they really don't be cautious about what you tell people next is stop restricting so many calories and start restricting more sugary processed foods not saying fully restrict Okay, you should always be able to have a little cinnamon roll here and there, okay? I used to definitely be one of those like as long as it fits in my macros type of person and that honestly made me develop like the worst stomach bloating problems because I would just use a bunch of fake sugars. And those things are filled with chemicals that are really bad for you, really ruin your gut. So focus more on like gut healthy foods, whole foods. If you want to use like sweeteners, go for honey, maple syrup, dates, things like that. Yeah, it's going to be some more calories, but you know, everything in moderation. Not all calories are the same. My point is you don't need to restrict a bunch of calories. If you're going to restrict anything from your diet, it should be processed foods. Next one I actually really like. It's it's okay to be bored. It's actually a great thing for creativity. It's therapeutic. Like this is something that I've always struggled with. I used to always just want something going on. Like I would get bored. Like, I used to think it was like a bad thing to be bored. It's not. Sometimes it's nice doing boring things like staying at home all day, reading or just going on a walk. It's kind of like a dopamine detox, I guess. Be content with not always doing something crazy. Watch a little less TV. You don't need to scroll through TikTok for hours. <clears throat> India, I still have problems with, but getting better. Put effort into your living space. India, I'm talking to you. Yes, I still don't have a couch. Okay, but I am actually actively looking and messaging like different sellers. I found actually a cute one on my, um, Facebook Marketplace. I'm hoping that that comes. I ordered my rug. I'm about to order my TV stand. I know I've been living here for over six months and um, it's still not fully set up. I just got lazy, okay? Like uh, two months in and I just got lazy. So I was like, I have my bed. What else do I need? But it's just so important. Put effort into your space around you. Keep a tidy space. Whether that's an apartment, even if it's just simply your bedroom, keep your place tidy. Do a little bedroom clear out. Maybe change your room around. I used to love changing my room around. I would do it all the time. I'd move my bed and everything. It made me feel like I had a whole new room. I really want to make my own art for my apartment and do like a big painting. And have one right up here. And then someone comes in like, oh my god, who painted that? And I'm like, yeah me but seriously it, it makes a huge difference in your mental well-being next is nothing good comes from drinking alcohol okay, i kind of half take that back cool to take that back in the sense of like i've had some fun nights with alcohol i'm not gonna lie alcohol's given me courage to do some fun things i've had some really fun alcohol nights but let me just be clear i've had a lot more horrible alcohol nights i'm not saying i'm sober now like i'm not but i just cut back a lot and i don't drink very often I learn to go out to parties and have fun without alcohol if you're at a party and you need alcohol to have fun then it's probably a really lame party and you should just go home anyway. Start writing a journal. I did this and I write one page every morning. It takes me about 15, 20 minutes. It's not always the most interesting shit, but it's like, just write down like what I did yesterday, what I'm planning on doing today, what I'm happy about, what I'm not happy about. Next is 
make wholesome social plans with your friends more often. I'm not saying like you don't always need to go out to a club. Make more social plans. I'm mainly talking to myself the past six months because I ghosted everyone. It made my mental health way worse not socializing with anyone. Make plans with your friends. Go to lunch, go to brunch, go to the movies, paint, go on a hike, just things like that. Next is no contact is the best way to move on. I'm talking to you, India. After we all know I got cheated on in 2021, I did not stick to no contact. The longest I did was like two weeks at a time. And it just made it so much harder to break up. It took me a whole extra year before I finally went like fully no contact. 19 is set boundaries in every relationship. And literally do not care if you think you look crazy or psycho. Obviously, let it be reasonable. I truly believe that one of the main reasons why I got cheated on was because I set no boundaries. It's always little things being pushed at a time until until the big one stepped over. It's a very thin line. You want to stay far from it. Everyone's going to have their own opinions. Like some people don't mind if their boyfriend hangs out one-on-one -on -one with another girl. Other people hate it. And I think it all comes down to the situation. My point is just set boundaries. And lastly, 20 is start forgiving yourself for mistakes faster on a condition that you must learn from it. If I made a mistake, I used to just dwell on it so much. For example, food binging. If I binged, I found that I beat myself up for it. I would hate myself for it. Sometimes I would go as far, trigger warning, as to like harming myself for it. I mean like being sick. I would just say horrible things to myself. I would look myself in the mirror with disgust. And that's no way to treat yourself. And you're wasting time. All these days, what I do is I forgive myself immediately because I also find that if I don't forgive myself, then I get into this other emotional whirlwind and then I would usually binge and cover up those emotions. So instead, it just works out for me best to forgive myself quickly, but then take a step back and I think, okay, where did I go wrong? What triggered it? What can I do next time? That's just an example. But I mean, it goes in a lot of ways in life. Like you're gonna make mistakes. Just forgive yourself. Don't dwell on it, but learn from it. Make sure you learn from it. Inspirational. Anyway, that is gonna be a wrap for this video. I love you all so much. Once again, just wanted to, what's it called? highlight the one piece of advice i gave that was you could listen to as much advice as someone could give you but nothing in your life is going to change until you actually decide to make the change i love and missed you guys so much thank you for watching bye